Hi, I'm Jackie Rabbit. I want to talk to you today about what hormones don't do to your hair. Some things they do and some things they don't. But let's go talk about it. Remember, give me a thumbs up and go subscribe. Click the bell so you know when I post a new video. Let's go talk about what hormones don't do to your hair and what they do and figure it all out. I did a lot of research, so you're going to enjoy this one. Come on, check it out with me. Hormones do some things we want them to. Sometimes we want them to do more. Sometimes they don't do anything that we want them to because hormones only giveth. They do not taketh away. And that's the rule. So when we talk about what hormones do for you and your hair, it's usually one topic. Facial hair. There's other things, arm hair, leg hair, chest hair, back hair, and hair everywhere else. But the thing they're not going to do, which some people assume as soon as you start taking hormones, it will remove or reduce your facial hair. It doesn't. It might ever so slightly soften it over a few years, but it is not going to reduce it or remove it. The hair on your arms will get softer and at some point maybe just not even noticeable. I don't bother doing much about it anymore. I used to wax my arms, but I don't know, it's been months and I guess I could, but I can barely see the stuff. Um, my legs are a different story. I still need to hit those once a week if I really want them to look good. That's normal. Most women with my lineage, a lot of Danish, German, and Italian, have to shave those puppies. So I do too. Um, but that's the way it goes. I didn't really have a lot of chest hair. I didn't have any back hair, thank goodness. Um, and, and that's the way that works. So chest hair mostly disappeared. If I really hunt for one, I could find one, but it's not something I care about removing. If it's a real problem, like every other woman in my family, I get out the razor in the shower and kill it. So it happens very, very infrequently, so I don't worry about it. I did have a little tiny bit of chest hair earlier when I was a boy, um, but it kind of just went away after three years. So Now <clears throat> I know what you're going to say, what do we do about this facial hair? Well, we can do something about the facial hair. We really can. It's called electrolysis. Now electrolysis is kind of a catch-all term, so we have to be careful with what we label electrolysis. Electrolysis technically is the movement of current through your follicle to create lye, which then kills the follicle itself. That means a wire probe is inserted into the hair pore follicle. It is passing current through that wire and another point of your body which is connecting the circuit. The electricity going through there creates a galvanic response which turns the moisture in the pore itself into lye and that will melt everything. Um, and then after that lye production has occurred, the hair can be pulled out with the follicle and if it's done correctly, a hair at that point on your face, that hair is not going to grow back. There is a, a rather interesting phenomenon where we call a lot of things electrolysis now. We call thermolysis, which is not electrolysis, we call thermolysis electrolysis. Sometimes we even call laser thermolysis, or laser electrolysis. Um, and in both cases, thermolysis and laser both use heat to destroy the follicle, not electric current. So it's very different. But electrolysis has somehow become the term by which all of it is combined together. Permanent hair removal has become known as electrolysis. Kind of like tissue paper for your face is Kleenex. It's not really true. But that's the term that gets kind of bounced around. There's a lot of misconceptions about it. So there are really three types in the electrolysis world. There is galvanic, which is what I actually do. And it has been the most effective for me. There is thermolysis, which uses radio frequency energy to create heat in that pore and 
cook the follicle and then kill it and then remove it. And then there is a blend of the two where a probe is still inserted in your face, electricity is still passed through, galvanic lye is produced, but not as much. And the process is cut short by adding some radio frequency energy to create some heat, thereby speeding the chemical reaction of the lye. So it's a little faster, but there's still heat involved. Then of course there's straight thermolysis, and that's just R RF or radio frequency energy heating the follicle itself. So those three types are what you're going to find in the world of electrolysis. I really recommend you find a straight galvanic operator, a good one. There's a reason for this. Now, these are all theories and opinions, but I've done a lot of study on this. Thermolysis, you want to avoid at all cost on your face. Arms, legs, chest, sure, that's fine. But your facial hairs are huge and take a lot of heat. And there's something in our face we don't want to lose. As an older trans woman, I value my collagen like you wouldn't believe. And I don't want any removed from this little beauty of a face I have. So I don't want heat cooking the collagen in my face. And thermolysis has been talked about as doing just that. And unfortunately, it could possibly lead to you looking older when you're done with the process of permanent hair removal on your face when you are finished. I don't want that, and I don't think many girls do. That's why I opted to move out of a situation where I was receiving blend and not having really good results. I don't know if it was operator or um, method. But I went to an electrologist who did straight galvanic and got great results. I'm getting close to done. Mostly under here on the chin is where we gotta go. Um, and I'll be going all year, but it will be done and over with in about the three year span. I've only been going to this electrologist a little over a year, so it'll be two years um, for the full thing, but I go a lot and it's taken a lot of hours. And that has to do with my genetic makeup. German is a tough one. They got a lot of hair, they're deep, and they just keep growing. And I got some German in me from the Danish side. So I also have Italian. So double whammy for old Jackie. But I'm doing what it takes to get it done. There is no free lunch here. There is no immediate hair removal that's going to poof, you're done by tomorrow. I know you're saying laser. I hear you. I hear you. But hear me out. After doing all this research, I realized there can be successful laser hair removal. But by and large, for girls like us, it's not going to work. And I'll tell you why. Laser relies on a few things. That the hair is relatively close to the surface of the face where the follicle goes in. That it is dark black. And that it is going at an angle that works for the laser to actually uh, evaporate it, heat it, and kill the follicle underneath. So if you have gray hair or brown or red in your beard, I've got bad news for you. Those aren't going to die. They're not. I guarantee you. Because the laser simply wants a jet black dark hair to conduct that heat right down to the base. If you have deep follicles, which a lot of us do, because we're older, and they grow deeper as we get older. It's not going to reach the bottom. So that's a bummer. Gray hairs obviously just almost reflect the thing. So we cook them off the surface, but they're still there. And those gray hairs are the deepest anyway. So sadly, for most of us older trans women, laser's not much of an option. Now I know girls go and do it and they're super excited because it's gone. Well, the regrowth rate on laser is horrendous. It almost all comes back, in most cases. There are some cases where it works. But for us, most of the time, electrolysis, true galvanic electrolysis, is what we're going to need. Now, there are good blend operators out there who do a little galvanic, little pop of heat, and it works. And they're not adding so much heat to our face that it hurts us. But finding that really good operator who knows what they're doing is going to be tough. Every operator is just a little different. Um, I found a fantastic one. 
I, I, I'm so blessed to have been able to find somebody who really knows what they're doing. I mean, this person nerds out day and night over this. They just absolutely love what they do. And in turn, it sparked interest in me, so I've done some research and study in the field. It's really fascinating. But I wanted to share some of this information with you because I keep hearing from some of you girls that comment down below about the facial hair stuff. And I wanted to shed some light on this. So, no hormones, they're not going to make that go away. They might soften things up, but that facial hair is there to stay until you kill it. And the only thing that's going to do it is electrolysis, thermolysis, a blend of the two, or laser. And laser just isn't in our cards. So, sadly, that's how it goes. Now, one more warning about laser. This is actually a medical fact. Sometimes, when girls do laser, it does kill the follicles on their face. And unfortunately, it doesn't evaporate the very root ball at the bottom, the black little ball at the bottom of the hair, even though the follicle itself has died. So the black root ball remains at the bottom of the pore. Now our skin is actually translucent. So you still see all of those little black root balls. And what happens is you end up having a five o'clock shadow, a permanent five o'clock shadow. There's one way to fix that though. Believe me, it can be fixed by going to a straight galvanic operator who then inserts the probe and restarts the entire process from the beginning, removing those little black root balls one by one to open the pore and release them so that you will eject them on your own out of the surface of your skin over the course of time. Do you want to do it twice? I don't. So as tempting as laser was at one point, I stayed away and I am super, super happy that I did. I wanted to share all this stuff with you because I know you're interested in it. So many of you comment and ask. So that being said, comment, ask me stuff. I'll be happy to answer and if I can't figure it out right away, I'll find the answer for you or at least get you a referral. So let me know what I can do to be helpful. Comment, let me know. I know it's a bummer. I already know it's a bummer. Um, two years is a long time, sometimes three years depending on the woman. It's tough, but one of the very first things in transition that everyone told me, and I listened, was get a therapist and start electrolysis right away. If you're even wondering, I don't know if I'm going to follow through, I'm right in the beginning of this. Well, who cares if you ever shave again? What does that matter? Go start. Get a therapist. That's for you. And go get your electrolysis started right away, because that is one of the worst, worst, most dysphoric things I could think of was facial hair. So, ugh. yes, it's uncomfortable. Can you do it? Absolutely. Learn some meditation. You do not need to do several things. Do not take pain meds. They won't help you. They will not help you. Do not go into your electrologist with moisturizer slathered all over you because you heard that moisturizing was great. You need to have a clean, nice, nothing on you face when you go see your electrolysis person who's going to do this for you. The only way that I recommend, and this is from experience now, um, if you want to reduce the discomfort and increase the uh, speed of operation for your, your operator, be as hydrated as humanly possible. And that means that all week long, a minimum of three to four days before you go to your appointment, you need to drink at least 10 glasses of water a day. There is no substitution here. You've just got to drink 10 glasses or more of water every single day for a minimum of three to four days. All week long would be better. And you should go in there absolutely hydrated to the gills because then there's more moisture in that pore. It's nice and juicy. And they can turn down the power, less discomfort for you. It's more reactive to the current, more efficient to get the hair killed. So you do go quicker when it's really nice and juicy when your face is nice and plumped up. It also gets rid of some wrinkles. I've noticed if I drink enough water, I lose the little lines around the corners of my mouth that I, I hate when I'm not hydrated. So that's a plus. 
I hope that helps and sheds some light. Comment away. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Remember, give me a thumbs up and go subscribe. Click the bell so every time I post a new video, you know about it. Take care of yourself. I know this is tough. I know you're struggling. If you want to talk to some other people who struggle, who understand, who've been through it, who've already done the electrolysis and can give you some real clues and answers about what it was like for them, go to transgenderpulse.com. I'll put a link below so you can click it and go there. It matters to me that you have the right information and that you get through this and you start correctly. Nothing wrong with removing your facial hair. Who wants to shave anymore anyway, right? So it's going to be okay. Go day by day. Let's just keep moving one foot in front of the other and eventually your process gets through the first year, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, and then you're just kind of like you. Take care of yourself. I'll see you next time. Bye. I found out that once you get about done with your face, you have to go get electrolysis downstairs to prep you up for surgery. <laughs> it doesn't hurt at all. I might be lying a little. <laughs>